thank you so much uh, for joining with us today okay so so before we start this uh, concept uh, let me introduce myself first <clears throat> so i am ratnakar reddy i am a senior devops engineer i have uh, around 8 plus years of experience in different uh, devops tools and technologies and uh, for the past 3 years i am working in uh, proning organization so uh in my uh, day to day life i work with uh, uh, different ci cd tools and cloud technologies uh, such as uh, jenkins docker kubernetes azure azure kubernetes service and uh, there are uh, terraform ansible configuration tools so i also uh, we were like uh, providing a technology uh, solutions to different clients uh, based on the requirement and also we help clients to improve uh, their existing development and deployment and uh, test automation process by adapting new technologies from the industry uh, okay i think uh, that's all i hope we can start this webinar so so this webinar uh, so we, in this webinar we are going to see what is docker like we are going to deploy or de like we are going to build the image and we are going to deploy those containers into kubernetes so okay let's start so the agenda is like oh, like what is docker and what is containerization so we are going to talk about what is docker and what is containerization and as well as we are going to see uh, how to containerize your application if you are having a dot net application or uh react whatever uh, spring or any application we are going to see uh, example uh, i have one spring boot application so that i am going to containerize application is containerize my spring boot application so we are going we are going to see in detailed way how to containerize your application and as well as uh followed by kubernetes and what is kubernetes and uh, how why we are using kubernetes and uh, what are the advantages of using kubernetes like uh, in what area it, it improves your productivity uh, so we are going to talk about that one also and uh, docker versus kubernetes like since we already using docker and why kubernetes why uh, kubernetes over docker so that also we are going to talk and also uh, a followed by a demo so whatever we are discussing we are going to see in a real time so how you are design a container and what is this docker and what is kubernetes and, and the architecture of um, architecture of kubernetes so that's all we are going to talk so let's start um, without wasting our time so let, let's get into our topic so what is docker okay so so before we understand docker i mean like the concept of the docker will be absolutely clear to you after my explanation i'll try to uh, explain in a real time scenario okay so in order to understand the docker so first and for most we need to understand what is the problem statement that docker is trying to resolve okay so the problem statement what is the problem statement the docker is trying to resolve for example so whenever a developer develops a product there are certain issues which probably almost every time occurs well that that, that problem is everywhere like i mean so i mean sorry uh, so in order to understand docker uh, i mean uh, okay uh, for example okay let me uh, i was confused okay whenever a developer say developer develops a product there are certain issues which probably almost every time occurs well that problem is uh, whenever you are designing a project it works absolutely fine in your machine in developer machine but as soon as the project is being moved to a production or maybe a someone else computer some like so your manager's computer or some deployment servers in that case the project usually fails to work with the same or performance or same optimization or same configuration this happens everywhere right uh, i think in everywhere this happens um, 
a lot of people can see it's working in a developer position when it comes to somewhere it definitely some issues will come but uh, but just to give you a bare minimum basic example whenever you develop any uh, website using java or php or asp.net whenever you work on the project i move the project onto web server there are definitely some uncertainties that occurs maybe your images are being not loaded properly or maybe the path is little bit different in a configuration so in some of these cases that is a classic example when everything works in a developer machine but as soon as it moved to another place it does not work like that right so this is a um, classic problem that it it works on a my machine so every like the further being this is a, this further being a classic debate our developer is saying it works on it works it works absolutely fine in my machine but uh, you can check on my machine the developer says while putting uh, and while putting the project into somewhere like production and other guy says hey uh, uh, you probably forgot to mention some of the dependencies that you might have installed while working on some other projects so that's why the problem is occurring so so this is a this debate is pretty nasty right so it usually everywhere uh, we see a lot of lot of in lot of situation so usually uh, so the docker is designed to specially address this exact problem it works on a my machine okay so first and foremost docker is just a completely a different thing and it's compatible with almost all, any programming languages or any project that you are working on it almost like a sheet of paper which you can put up anything right it's almost like that i mean so the docker allows you to have a absolutely sealed airtight container and these containers are absolutely part of docker this is a main uh, thing main of main functionality in docker the containerization so these containers are i mean what is container these containers are wrap up your entire code and these are absolutely portable the portability means you can ship anywhere like you can use anywhere uh, the portability is one of the absolute charm of the docker now we can take this container and wherever you are going to put this container this container is going to work absolutely and exactly like how it worked on your machine there is no changes if it is working in your machine it definitely work on other machine if, if this is a container so not only that docker allows to have a social containers also social containers means uh, i'll explain so that means the containers are shared like uh, your uh, social status on instagram or facebook it allows to uh, publish these containers onto a social platform well uh, i'll i'll give you some one classic example so whenever we are learning a mysql and uh, installing mysql in your local definitely it is a nightmare sometimes right it's installing a mysql is not a easy thing it's not a easy job um every time there are a lot of issues will come while installing but this process can be done frictionlessly with help of docker right uh, let me uh, give you an example so here i am just have uh, this is docker hub uh, i'll explain in a little bit what is docker hub if you explore in the docker hub you can create docker hub uh, account and this docker hub is a uh, uh like you know open source but with some limitations uh like you know you can create a number of public repositories but there is a limitation with the private repositories if you want to create a more private repositories you need to buy so if you explore if i want to install a, a mysql into my machine so we just need to uh, browse this and uh, just mysql mysql so this is my mysql uh, image you just you just need to have a docker in your machine and you just copy this command and this 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 and just run this command in your local that's it the mysql is ready in your machine you will only to go to a mysql website and you need to download a lot of files and install and stuff next next there is no uh, next next just uh, run this command in your local machine 
the only the thing is you need to have a docker engine installed in your machine that's it so this is a, a advantage of uh, using docker okay so <clears throat> but uh, this uh, like you know uh, so and the docker is software that allows you to create these containers even you can also create a, a, a containers like con images like this and you can also publish into a docker so someone else if somebody wants your uh, image they can just pull image into their local and they, they can just run so that way uh, uh, it, it helps to uh, it helps actually so I mean, Docker is a software that allows you to create these containers and these containers are not just like any container. These are super powerful and super packed up with a consist of a lot of things. These containers are packed up your code, your configurations, your dependencies, or sometimes networking information, sometimes uh, operating systems also. So, uh, in order to summarize, we can divide Docker into three main essential things. One is Docker is a client side application. That means it's a client side application programming. You can just install uh, in your install Docker and it can does all things for you, including designing a container for you and you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, all of your code and config files will be back and you can just move it anywhere you like just like that the second is docker uh, can be deployed anywhere like you know i mean uh, the second one is so docker also acts as a service so you can deploy uh, docker you can install docker in your uh, deployment servers also then you can you can just uh, uh, take your container and deploy into a server also. Uh, this is the second thing. And more third thing is, I already mentioned you, this is a, a, a Docker hub and a, you can publish your, uh, uh, you can publish your Docker images and somebody else, somebody wants your image, they can download the social, like a social platform. So uh, this is how it works. Uh, let me uh, go to a slide and uh, so, so this is a, a single container Docker workflow. So in order to create a Docker image and in order to run a container, so run, can Docker container is just a runtime environment of your image. Image is packed up with all your configurations and networks and like, you know, dependence and everything. So the Docker file is a main important thing. So here we need to mention your uh, properties and uh, all entry points and uh, uh, port values. Once you uh, create this Docker file, we are going to build and that will generate a Docker image and you are going to run the Docker image and it will be a Docker container. So you can, uh, instead, of, you know, instead of, you know, uh, Git and uh, source code and everything. So we have this Docker image and you can run and you can ship this container anywhere you like. It works exactly like how it worked on a developer mission. There is no differences. So that's it. So, okay. So let me uh, explain you in a, uh, so then like, I mean, now uh, we are going to see, uh, we are going to prepare this Docker file and we are going to build a Docker image and we are going to run a container. So let me open, uh, I have one Spring Boot application. Uh, before that, let me uh, tell you a few uh, useful commands. So, to see uh, your Docker images, what are the Docker images that you have? Actually, the Docker engine is installed in my machine. So, if you want to uh, uh, like you know, use this command or anything, Docker command, you need to have this Docker engine should be installed in your machine. So if you execute this command, it will list out all your images. Like right now I'm having Jenkins, all are, there are a lot of images that I have which is related to Kubernetes, but I don't have any, uh, my personal uh, uh, application uh, image. Uh, let, then we are going like, just in a while we are going to see my Docker image here. So let me go to my Spring Boot application. So this is uh, my Spring Boot application. And uh, 
here i have a docker file so in the target i have my jar file also so i'm since i'm using a java and spring boot right so here i am that's why i'm having a jar file if you have a dot net and if you have a react it will be different but the configuration is same the little bit different there are few more uh, uh, entry points and these will be come into your docker file let me open docker file uh, being a time sec i already created this docker file but i'll explain okay so uh, th this is a spring boot application i'm using java and the in the java i'm using java 8 so that's why i'm just uh, i mentioned uh, from J open jdk 8 this is a image this is a public image if you go docker and op open jdk so this is i'm using open jdk and you just need to mention the version because uh, i mentioned 8 because i'm using a java 8 so you can mention java 11 also if you want if you are using java in your local environment okay so so i want to use my java i like because it's mainly if you come to this uh, java it, it is mainly on jar uh, because we need to build jar first then then only the docker will be uh, since i already have jar in my uh, target folder so that's why it's an argument uh, this is my target folder of jar and i want just copying the, uh, this jar file and this is the entry point you can i think if you are a java guy you will get to know what is this command so to run your jar of to run the jar file so this command should be there. So that's why this is an entry point of my image or container. So, and I want to expose my container into this port network. So once I build my application uh, uh, inside the Docker engine, it will be exposed to this uh, port name member. So let's see, uh, let's go and build your container, Docker image. So, okay, let me go to over here. Let me clear this first. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm in my uh, webinar. Like my, this is my project webinar. I mean, same directory. Okay, so you just need to uh, type Docker build and the file name of your Docker file. If you are using a different name, you just need to mention. And I want to tag. This is my Docker Hub RG two double nine two double nine. This is my Docker Hub username because I want to push my uh once i build my image i want to push this image into a docker hub right so that's why i'm using this username you can also mention single name but uh, in, in order to push your uh, come like you know your image you need to mention this username so let's say webinar okay uh, then i'm in a same directory right so that's why this one. so it is going to build my docker image so then we can use the Docker image and uh, okay, the Docker image is ready. Let's execute Docker image command. Now you can see RG two double nine two double webinar. That's what we mentioned, right? RG two double nine two double nine. Okay, and uh, I, since I didn't mention any uh, tag, right? So it is default. It will take a uh, latest. So okay. So what is next? My Docker image is ready. So we can run Docker image in Docker also. Let me even, I want to create a container, right? So let me execute that con my Docker image. I want to run Docker image, so Docker and run. Just mention port number. I'm just using a all internal and external tool and name of your Docker image. My if you have a different tags, you should mention like this latest or something, or eight or nine, whatever. If you have a, if you want to use a latest one, you just need to man, don't don't mention anything. And that's it, I think. Let's see. It should run, and uh, the application should be available and three point double two double two port number. Okay, application is up and running. Let me go to uh, here and let's see my application is up and running or not okay my application is up and running let me go to here and uh, let me run another command like you know if you want to see 
what are the running containers what are like what are the running container that you have right now if you execute a, a docker ps it gives you the running container list what are the containers are running right now so or if you want to see all the container history you just need to type docker ps and all it gives you all uh, containers list history uh, like then the previously what you have run and all this list, list history will be it will be shown to you like right? docker ps here all container list okay my container is uh, so okay let me show you another one so here i am having a empty in the docker hub i don't have any repository repositories right now so my docker image is ready but uh, so this is not only uh, your developer job right so the doc this image is hand over to some other operations team okay how it is going to be happen is since uh, if you are uh, if you are working in a github or bitbucket and the source code is, uh, they have access to source code but here once we build your image we need to uh, push your image into a docker hub then only they'll take your image and they'll deploy into their uh, required area so in order to push your uh, image into a docker hub you just need to type docker and push docker push my can my docker image name this is maybe not that's it once i push this container into my uh, docker hub this should be available in docker hub okay it's using the latest since i didn't mention any uh, tag values okay just it will take a couple of seconds uh, i should see my docker image here so that my develop my other team members or my operations team uh, they can uh, pull my image into their local or servers and they'll they'll deploy into required area that's what we are trying to achieve uh, okay it's 99 just a couple of seconds if you want to uh, pull any image you just need to uh, use docker pull and the image name you can see uh, there are hundreds of thousands of uh, images are available if you are working with a python you can use that one also if you are using uh, uh, the node or any um, a database these are the all uh, public uh, images you can just pull these containers and uh, pull the image, uh, images and you can just run in your local and uh, every container have some configure you, you don't know how to run this ubuntu but there are uh, details are they, they'll mention for every container every image how to run this image into your local Uh, all these con combined lines, everything you, they'll uh, uh, the information will be available under this. Yes. See. Pushed. Okay. Let me go to. It was done. It was pushed. Let me go to Docker Hub and let me refresh. Okay. See my Docker uh, RG two double nine two double nine webinar. my image is available in uh, docker hub so if anybody want wants my image they'll just use this command and then just use this command and they'll just run this command in the local that's it my image will be available to them also they can deploy anywhere they like so here you can also i uh, since we didn't mention any tag right so uh, if you are having a versions like 1.2 0.2 or like you know all tag will be stored so any version you want specifically you just need to mention a tag name that's it uh, that version will be deployed into your machine will be pulled into your machine sorry okay so this is how uh, we need to build you need to build a docker so in order to build your docker uh, docker image and uh, you need to create a docker file and then you just need to run you need to build a docker image then you are just going to use uh, you just need to run that image and it will come create a container 
and that's it okay my since my container is already running how do i stop this container how do i stop my application so docker it gives you a run container list right so this is my container it's running and i want to stop my container so i just docker stop container id let's see it got stopped and let me go to website okay let me refresh this is gone this is gone right okay so this is how uh, so let me run again this ps uh, we already since we already stopped uh, our container right so that's why uh, this content is not available under uh, uh, here but you can see the container details here see the docker webinar is available if you want to uh, uh, because whenever you are running this container like you know you you mentioned docker and port number and everything right whenever you want to start this application again you just know don't, don't need to mention anything just let me clear this first Here, TS. Yeah. I just need this container to start. Offer start and container ID. So that's it. Your container will be up and running. If you go to, if you want to see logs of your container, logs, docker logs, your container ID. See, this is is available. If you go to here and if you refresh. See, my application is up and running. So only one time configuration. If you want to different ports and different configuration, you need to type always Docker and all these things. But if you want the same configuration, you just need to run using container ID. You don't need you know you don't need to mention this all this uh, uh, container and then like you know this I mean entire thing because you sometimes you may forgot or you may miss something so that's why you can run a container just like this okay let me start this container let me stop let me reach okay good stop okay so that's all about uh, Docker. So how to build your like you know if you want a container as your application you have to you need to create a Docker file. You need to mention all required information in the Docker file. Then you need to build, and then you just need to run. If you want to publish your image, and you can just push, and uh, uh, even uh, other team members or operations team can also access those images and they can deploy. Okay. So this is all about the Docker and Docker image and Docker file and container. So why we are using Docker? Okay. So one thing is see uh, while preparing the Docker file, you are you didn't mention all your OpenJDK and everything, right? Sorry, you you mentioned everything, right? So for example you are working in a java project and you something and uh, the, if, if the operations team they want to deploy the J same java file in you know, server in the server uh, if you are, if you provide jar files to operations team so they are going to uh, run jar, this jar file in the deployment server like develop, deployment server but this is not going like you know uh, in the in the deployment server also we need to install java 8 then only it will work right so with you need to install not only java there are other things also need to be installed but using docker we don't need to install if the deployment server is there we just need to have a docker engine on the deployment server and they'll just pull the image and they'll just run you don't need to install java java on the deployment server you don't install mysql you don't install any other node or anything and this is a typical diagram of uh, docker see for example if you are using a virtual machines for your deployment servers so you are creating a virtual machines 
infrastructure and host OS, there is a hypervisor and at the top of that, there is a guest OS for every virtual machine. And then we are going to deploy your app. So that app, that app also required a lot of configurations, a lot of software need to be installed, sometimes drivers, sometimes a lot of things, a lot of configurations, right? So, but by, by, by taking advantage of Docker, you just need to have this Docker engine and the container. So here, the guest voice means it is taking a lot of uh, uh, GBs of data, right? And as well as we are installing other uh, uh, Java and other things also, right? So it is also taking some memory. It's not about memory, it's also performance. But because uh, by if you're creating a virtual machine, it definitely uh, less performance. Like you need to have a, a huge uh, server to create a multiple virtual machines. But here, the Docker engine and app container container that's it the container is packed up with everything like your source code and configurations network information and like required software information and everything and these are portable also if you want to ship your container anywhere you just like um, uh you just need like you know just like a container in a real time what are the country they'll move um, countries to countries right like that we can just you can just uh, ship your container anywhere you like and anywhere you like anywhere you can deploy anywhere you like that's it i hope you understand uh, about this docker and uh, okay so after this so we'll start um, kubernetes so we already kubernetes uh, okay it's also called as a cube and cube um, so it's basically, it's an open source, uh, actually, even Docker is a paid one uh, because uh, there are some limitations uh, with the uh, open source, like Docker is also open source, but there are limitations, right? But in the Kubernetes, uh, it's op completely open source. Uh, it's a base, the Kubernetes is basically orchestration tool, actually. It was developed by Google and uh, Let me explain because see here uh, we already uh, created your created your image and, and uh, created containers and everything is working fine. So then why we are using Kubernetes over Docker? So why? Because your application is up and running, you are able to move your containers anywhere you like, and uh, it's a very uh, efficient. And uh, but why we are uh, why the Kubernetes comes into picture over Docker? So let's see the problem, what is the problems and why we are using uh, this um, Kubernetes over Docker. Because see, so dev Docker is lies on your developer machines usually or in CI, uh, uh, CI tools, for example, Jenkins or Bamboo or anything. So developer develops something, uh, some project and they'll uh, build an image and they'll push to Docker, Docker registry called Docker Hub. Okay, or they'll publish their code and CI uh, continuous integration tool will take care of everything like building a Docker image and pushing that image to Docker Hub. So then here, uh, the uh, when it, it should go to a deployment server, here the Kubernetes uh, comes into game. So these are the virtual machines and uh, over Docker, uh, like you know, over Kubernetes uh, engine, uh, like so, uh, every uh, deployment server have this uh, Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, so once we have this image, they'll pull their image and uh, they're going to deploy. Because basically, uh, why we are using uh, Kubernetes on a developer deployment server? Because Kubernetes is a orchestration tool. Orchestration means. Let me explain. Uh, orchestration it's, it, it is used to orchestrate containerize cloud native microservices app. basically orchestration is manage your application manage your containers what does it mean by managing your containers we can also manage containers in docker but by taking advantage of kubernetes we can do a lot of other things also like you know deployment is easy we can create a deployment file or there is a we can also scale it up and down also based on the traffic user traffic if you want to scale your application that can that is not possible with docker 
there are alternatives with a kubernetes also we can use docker swan also but uh, industry uh, you know the best uh, i mean uh, what can i say the the best approach the best practices are like using docker with kubernetes so managing your application like if you want to scale it up or scale it down based on the traffic uh, we can do that in a kubernetes or uh, you you are running uh, two instances okay okay one instance is uh, something has happened and uh, it is unresponsive so docker will take care of that actually if the one instance is one instance is go goes down docker automatically starts another instance it replaces another instance that is called actually pod we are going to see what is pod and deployment service so that is we can do uh, you know, seamlessly like easily with using docker and also we can auto scale also if you want to see like if you want to uh, based on the user traffic uh, i want to like instead of having two instances i i i'll have one instances i will i'll have one instance but based on the user traffic i want to auto scale the user traffic traffic is increasing i want to auto scale to up to 10 ports like 10 instances if the user traffic is going down i want to uh, uh, destroy one of the like you know instances into like it come back to one instances uh, that is all that is all like rolling updates also you, you, you can easily uh, roll back and uh, you know rolling updates we can do that easily so we are going to see uh, all these things and uh, while uh, in a real time scenario how it is going to be so if you see in the docker there are three main essential important things are there the deployment and service and pod so the deployment will take care of something in doc service will take care of something and pods are like instances of your application let's see what is deployment and what is service and what is pod so <clears throat> so this is a typical diagram to explain uh, deployment and service and pods so let me start with pod the pod is uh, you know see uh, the kubernetes cluster is have a multiple like one master node and multiple worker nodes one worker node may have a multiple pods pod is nothing but a, it contains a it, it contains a one or more containers running containers your uh, spring boot application or your dotnet or like you know whatever front end application one or more uh, uh, containers pod will contain okay so if you set uh, instances to three so it will going to deploy three instances so these are the prod in a same worker node or different worker node uh, so all these if, if you want to set three or if you want to uh, uh, create a labels and uh, if you want to decide uh, how what are the containers like you need to uh, in order to run a container in kubernetes we need a docker image also right so all these we need to mention so so that is taking care of this deployment so deployment is taking care of how many replica sets and uh, the pod information and everything but why service we are using so over this pod and uh, deployment see you said your instance the replica sets to three replica sets is nothing but instances of your application you may set uh, three or ten or like you may set one uh, you, you can you can auto scale see there are three instances i have right now something is happened with this pod okay this this will go down and uh, the deployment and docker will kubernetes will take care of kubernetes will take care of it it will create another instance immediately one once this is uh, destroyed see it is having an ip ip address these ip address are dynamic so every time the instance instance is destroyed or created it will give you it will generate and it will uh, uh, it, it has a different ip so it's called a dynamic ip so there is no uh, static ip here so for example if you are deploying a microservices into kubernetes uh, cluster those microservices should communicate each other right but here the problem is the pod is destroyed and another instance is created that ip also different right so that's why the services comes into picture the service is taking care of all this communication pod communications and service is having a static ip so that ip it is not going to change 
but these ips are like dynamic ips so that's why we are using a service so this is a, a, a high level explanation um, we can discuss for a lot of things in pod there are a lot of information but due to uh, we don't have a much time right so that's why i do this uh, i'll explain in a, a short way um, okay <clears throat> So we are going to see what is, we are going to create a deployment and we are going to create these pods and we are going to see what is service and we are going to uh, deliberately delay, like destroy one of the pod service and how it is creating these new IPs and how uh, this uh, IP was uh, ex exposed to a cluster and how we need to expose to a globe like public. So all these things we are going to see in, a, uh, in the next. Uh, I hope, I hope it is clear um, to you uh, about this Kubernetes and what is this deployment and service. Deployment is nothing but it's taking care of your instances and, uh, and everything. The service is nothing but it's a, it is a communication. It will uh, establish communication with among your parts. The pod is nothing but it's a pod, contain your, uh, pod contains your container and it's a runtime run environment of your uh, application, the pod. So, okay, so so whatever we uh, discussed about Kubernetes, like uh, deployment file, service, and uh, pods. So let's do uh, that in a uh, real-time scenario, how we need to uh, create this deployment, how we need to deploy our image into our container into uh, Kubernetes, and how we are going to auto-scale or scale down, or uh, how do you go, uh, how do you like, you know, uh, logs and, uh, how do, how do you expose this into public? So we are going to see all these things. Let me open this first. Okay. Since we already have a Docker image, right? This image, sorry, this is spelling mistake. Yes. Since we already have this Docker image, right? And it is also available in Docker Hub repositories, right? Okay. So, so deployment, so Kubernetes deployment file, maybe it may be a JSON file, it may be a YAML file, YML file. So the, there are some advantages of using YAML file because, because it is easy to modify. So since we don't have much time, right? Already, I already created this deployment service uh, YAML file. You can create a deployment service and deployment and service different, like separate files, but, uh, I created within a one file, so deployment and service. So one thing I explain, I want to explain here. You can see in the container container details. I'm I'm just I just mentioned uh, this one. So this is my repository RG two double two double webinar. That's what I'm going to use uh, in to deploy this container into a Kubernetes. If you mention another image, that is going to be deployed. If it match with all these configurations, okay. So it is an app version. So app version is a Kubernetes. Like uh, if you are using a different version, you need to mention other versions. So this is about Kubernetes and uh, the kind. This is a deployment type, right? So uh, kind is a what kind of uh, thing you are going to do. So here, this is a deployment, and this is a service. So uh, deployment. Uh, there are metadata, it should match with your labels and everything. Uh, <clears throat> so here you can see the replicas. And uh, if I mention 10 replicas, my uh, in, you know, once I deploy this application, there are 10 instances will be available. If you mention one, one instance will be available. So that's it. Uh, I think these labels are like, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to understand uh, app name. Uh, so if you are like, this is your service name, this is your uh, deployment, uh, it is going to uh, like, you know, let, let me open this first and let me clear this. And uh, so you just type git kubectl and get all. So it gives you all deployments and pods and services list. If you want to see what are the deployment that I have, if you want to see what are the services that I have, if you want to see what are the like instances that are running currently, just type this command. It will list out all the things. I'm just having, I just have this Kubernetes cluster IP. So this is a default one. 
so i don't have anything for now so once we deploy once we deploy this application this uh, yaml file uh, into kubernetes so we should see uh, all these things uh, we should see we should the list should be available my webinar service deployment webinar service service and webinar service app uh, uh, pod information everything should be come here and also we can we can expose the application to a public environment also okay let me uh, go here okay i think uh, image pool follow is always and uh, my content pool is google too and uh, inside of the cluster i want to expose my application to eight this is inside okay the target port and inside i want to expose my application to uh, 80 port inside cluster okay let's see uh, so <clears throat> i'm in a same directory and again you just need to you can create anywhere you like uh, there's there's no not not any specific thing you can create anywhere but this should be available on your docker hub so kubectl and uh, apply so my deployment file name deployment service dot ym let's see deployment service let me check again deployment service okay yeah i think so here you can see i have only one replica it will it means only one part should be available okay so the deployment is created and service is created let me execute this command again oops ctl get all okay now you can see since we here we have only one cluster ip but we have pod information webinar like service information and deployment also so uh just a minute okay uh, let me cube uh, ctl get pods so this is the pod i have so i just want to see uh, log information of this pod so you just need to type ctl logs of your pod name this is pod that's it see my spring boot application in running running in a kubernetes so this is how it, no, you need to see, if you want to see logs you just need to uh, take this uh, pod name the pod name is a little bit different uh, okay this is dynamic thing so it will be uh, always different uh, i mentioned a pod like my pod name in uh, deployment file web service app that's why it's a web service app okay now what to do what is next so my service is open but uh, i want to uh, right now i have only one instance is available let me close this up cube ctl and get pods so i have only one run running instances let me open this information port information also uh, this is ip my pod ip i already mentioned the slide right the pod ip is a dynamic ip once if you if you destroy this application if you if something is happened with this pod and if it, it, <coughs> it goes down and uh, the kubernetes will uh, create another instance the that ip will be different okay so right now i'm i'm having only one instance and i want to scale it up okay manually i want to manually scale it up to five instances okay so to do that you just need to type kubectl scale so since these pod information and everything is taking care of deployment deployment file right so that's why we should use a deploy deployment file is taking deployment type of deployment is taking care of all these things right so that's why i just mentioned a, a deploy and my app name service app and uh, replicas so in the if you see uh replicas and just manually mentioning you can mention here also but uh, if you want to uh, intentionally change your replicas in the runtime environment you can change here also i want to set it three okay once i uh, execute this command my uh, 
uh, pod will be scaled up to three instances. Let's see. Okay, it was scaled. Let's execute this command again. Cube CTL. Okay, pods. Now see, there are three instances. And uh, let me run this. Get off. Sorry. I go. See <clears throat> the pods is and uh, if you see in the deployment, ready three and updated three available three. If the something is done, or something is goes down. You can see here also uh, how many parts are available right now. Okay, so that way we can scale. You just need to type cube uh, CTL scale and deploy and uh, name of your deployment file because I in the deployment I mentioned that uh, this one right. So that's why I type uh, this deployment service app and just replicas. If I want to scale it down, okay, same command two. Scaled. Let me just do this command. I can get all. Now you can see the available is two. The current is two. It is scaled down. So that way, uh, that is the you know how efficiently we can scaling up and down uh, using this Kubernetes, right? Okay. Let me clear this up. Okay, my application is running in Kubernetes, but I want to expose this application, right? So I want, if I want to expose to this public or somewhere like outside, outside of the cluster. So because that way, so we need to use this command kubectl and port forward. If you want to see individual get all means it will fetch all the details uh, about deployment and service and parts. If you want to see only service, it will give you this cluster IP. Okay. So okay, uh, let me open one tool here. So it's a Kubernetes port forwarder. If you don't want to use any commands or anything, so you can do here as well. Let me delete first. Okay. So let me delete this existing one. So here uh, I want to expose my application to uh, outside outside of the cluster. So that's why it's a menu queue and uh, namespace. I'm using a default namespace in my Kubernetes. So kind is. So since uh, service is taking care of this communications, right? The service IP is stable, right? So that's why we use service. So this is my web ser webinar service, ser webinar service service. You can see in the service section, I mentioned webinar service, let's see. Uh, you just need to select this and this is off now. And the local code, where you want to expose this application. I want to expose this application to 333 and my what is my local port? Uh, number is my application web services it is exposed to 80 right so just choose 80 and uh, that's it i think yeah and just start okay just click this port number now you can see my application is up and running i'm just i'm accessing this application from a kubernetes cluster okay so this is how we can use command also. There is a kubectl uh, port forward name of the service. And uh, your port number, that's it. So that way we can do uh, port forward also from, but uh, this is more handy because uh, 
there are a lot of services are running right so if you want to see in a detailed way so um, using this kubernet forward you can just uh, uh, google this port kubernet forward this is just a .dxc file uh, you can run in your local machine or deployment servers also if you want okay that's it uh, let me explain one more thing so i mentioned the self feeding also right kubectl get all so right now uh, let me run this pod information kubectl get pods okay so if you see uh, it is running at 6 and 5 172 17 and 6 and 5 right? let me delete one of this pod okay i'm deliberately like in de deleting this uh, uh pod because the kubernetes will take care like you know it will automatically create another instance right so let me run the command to cdf delete since i'm deleting for right that's it okay pod is deleted I deleted one of the part. Let's just uh, open a second one. So then, QCTL. Okay, see? Still, I'm, I just deleted one of this part, but still I have two, okay? And you can see here, there is six and five, but now it's seven and five. Since I deleted this J, G, five, six, right? See, it is replaced with F9 and Q and D. Because XB and file is still there, the answer is uh, yeah, I just deleted, right? So Kubernetes, uh, it is all right. self field. This is concept called self field. Uh, when you when something is happened to pod or like unresponsive, it automatically create uh, your uh, this pod automatically will start another pod replace. So that's why. So you see this IPs are changed with the pod. So that's why we are using over uh, service over this part uh, to make it communicate. Because if you are, you, you just expose your service to some external code, right? So this is not possible with this uh, pod information because these are keep changing, right? So that's why. Okay, so that's all. So okay, so now we have done manually. We have scaled our application manually, right? So uh, right now we have two. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, give you one more uh, describe if you want to see complete detail describe uh, right. see this is my uh, this uh, deployment uh, file history you can see here uh, there are two desired right so i just scaled it to right so that's why it's a, a desired to and total to and available to unavailable to zero so this so this way we can check uh, your uh, pod information how many resources are available how many resources are unavailable uh, that way so now it's okay so we have auto scaled your application like scaled your application but I want, I don't want to scale manually and I want to scale based on the traffic. The traffic is coming uh, into uh, servers, the server, uh, like, you know, some of the percentage reached. I want to scale uh, one, my, like, you know, my, I want to scale up my instances. Uh, so that way, uh, so no, there is no hard coding, like there is no, uh, uh, some instances, because based on the traffic, it goes up. Uh, instances uh, sites and uh, based on the, if the traffic is goes the instances will come down okay so let's see how we can uh, how we can achieve that uh, cube ctl there is a command cube ctl and uh, auto scale auto scale and since we are uh, uh, like auto scaling our deployment right so deploy so this is webinar service and uh, what is next so here uh, we need to mention cpu information cpu what is it cpu percentage 
CPU percent is equal to, I will say 95. Once it is reached to 95, I want to switch one other. I want to use minimum port information. Is, you know, I want to use minimum three ports and maximum. So maximum, I want to use 10 ports. So once the CPU percent is 90% reached, uh, the pod will be auto scaled. Okay. Once it is down, the pod will be descaled to three uh, pods. Let me execute this. So it is all horizontal uh, uh, pod scale auto scaler. So my uh, apps are like scaled. Let me run that one. Get. Okay, see, uh, container creating and I, now, I, now I have three because we mentioned minimum three, right? So that's why I have three. Let me rerun again this command. See, now I am having three. So you can type this also, get HPA webinar service and or you can type this one also hpa nothing but a horizontal powered auto scaler you can see the complete details because he this is a <clears throat> hpa and the minimum ports and maximum ports three replicas and uh, and we set to 95 percent once it is reached to 95 it, it is going to auto scale to another one uh, based on the traffic, it goes down and go down, goes down. So that way, we can auto scale your application uh, based on the traffic. So what else we need to cover is it's just a self heal concept and uh, okay. So okay, now we just auto scale, but I want to delay my auto scale. Uh, so to achieve that, if you want to delete your auto scaler, horizontal uh, pod auto scaler, so you just need to type do CTL and uh, delete. You just you need to mention HPA and type webinar. Okay, you can see uh, it was deleted. Let me execute this command again. See error because no horizontal scale is available because we just deleted, right? We just deleted our horizontal uh, for auto scaler. That's why it, uh, it was deleted. So that way we can delete uh, auto scaler also. Uh, that's where we can scale it and scale it down manually. If you don't want to scale it up manually, you just need to set this up. Auto scale uh, desired of minimum ports and maximum ports. Let me clear this up first. So, get all means it will give you all the details. So, I think. Um, so, okay, so you deployed your application into Kubernetes and uh, by applying a deployment file, yeah, why I am that file. But if you want to delete, if you want to destroy your application, if you want to stop your application, so what? So to do that, you just need to type kubectl delete and uh, the file name deployment service dot so this will destroy your services, all the deployment files and uh, services and pods from the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, you see, it is deleted. The deployment is deleted and service is deleted. Let me fetch get all and see uh, the my, my pods are terminating. It's terminating. After a few seconds, all will go. See, only I have only Kubernetes service that is cluster. So that's all. I think I covered everything. Let me see. We, since we already destroyed service, right? So if you go, if you preload this application, this application is gone because since we already deleted uh, the deployment, 
in Kubernetes are destroyed. So that's why it's not available. So, so far we see uh, like, you know, I deliberately deleted one pod in pod and in the Kubernetes also automatically created another instance once I destroyed one pod. And uh, we auto scaled and scaled down and we auto scaled our application and we exposed to uh, uh, cloud outside of the cluster. So I think uh, so that's all uh, for, for this webinar. And uh, so this is the, uh, this is a webinar, uh, uh, first webinar, and this is a series, it will continue. So the second webinar will be, you know, uh, whatever the things we have done uh, so far manually. So those things we are going to automate uh, using some CI tools, uh, for example, Jenkins. So we are like, we just need to push your code into uh, some source code and area like GitHub, Bitbucket. So that's it. Uh, everything will be happen automatically, like, you know, building image and pushing that into Docker Hub and um, Kubernetes, like, you know, um, the deployment file, uh, pushing the, like pulling those image from Docker Hub and deploy to uh, Kubernetes cluster. Automatically it will happen. So that is uh, the next webinar, second webinar. And uh, the third webinar, so where we are going to see, so, so, so far we have uh, configured everything in a local, right? So the Kubernetes is running in my local, Docker is running in my local, and everything is running in my local. So the third webinar, we are going to see all these things in Azure, Azure Cloud, using Azure Kubernetes service and uh, service registry uh, and Azure DevOps. So we are going to configure all the things in Azure DevOps or Cloud using uh, uh, taking advantage of Azure DevOps and uh, AKS. So, so the farm here we just explained about Docker and uh, how to build an image and uh, how to deploy that into Docker and Docker like how to run a Docker image in Docker and uh, how to deploy your uh, Docker image into a Kubernetes and how to auto scale all these things. So the second is uh, all automate in um, CI tools and third is and the into cloud entire thing. We're not going to do anything in local. All things will be happening. Uh, Azure DevOps using uh, Azure DevOps, like using taking advantage of this AKS and all this service registry. So, so that's all uh, from my end. So, if you have any questions or anything, like, please, please, uh, you know, I'll try to answer your all questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to answer all if you have any questions. Anyone, no? please. If you have any questions related to Docker or Kubernetes and clusters or service deployment or ports, anything, I'll try to answer. Okay, I think uh, there are no questions, I hope. Okay. So I think I think uh, if you don't have any questions, let me see. So there was one question from attendee. So when will be a Docker and Kubernetes with the CI/CD session will be given? I think in a ten days. I think we'll take around uh, one week or like we need to uh, collect our entries, right? So I think in a ten days or fifteen days uh, in between, uh, we're going to conduct this in an entire. Uh, like, you know, we're going to do all the, we're going to automate all these things in Jenkins using, using Jenkins. So that session will be on in a, within the 15 days. So any more questions? So far I see one, one question from what I mean. Okay. I think, uh, there are no questions coming into chat. So, so in that case, so we can conclude. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll try to uh, uh, give you as much as information. And uh, there are a lot of other webinars also going to be in the place. And uh, every 10 days, we are going to conduct. And uh, uh, we are just uh, sharing knowledge with, uh, all, with, all, with all you. Thank you and uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much.